How's it going, Internet? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get that imagination all wrapped up. Time to get into some creativity. And above all, right now, it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Ilya Repin. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. He is a beautiful uh, painter, and illustrator, and artist. Um, like I said, he does these, these great, just really in-depth, paintings where you, there's so much emotion and uh, detail in there where you really can feel um, even more hyper than I would say a photograph that you feel like the essence of whatever uh, the character brought or that he brought to the character as well and I really think that um, this is the kind of stuff that, that for me is definitely a mix of, of craftsmanship and understanding of the medium and an art where you can take a subject and you just put those little bit of spin on it where you kind of don't put nearly as much detail in here and really just focus right in here and do that you know hyper detailed in here and the rest of it so that you really can have that artistic um, focus but still uh, you know show that you you understand all the concepts of light and color and form and all that kind of stuff so I think he's he's a great great artist um, again this is another one of, of my favorite pieces of his you can just see how much uh, you know he can capture um, these each individuals and each one has expressions and, and feelings and, and they're all unique and you can tell they each have their own personality and uh, he does a good job uh, too like I said uh, of taking um, realism but adding a little bit of, of his own artistry or style or characterization but still keeping it so you're like wait is that no yeah that, you know pause because if you just looked at that like uh, you know as a as a small little thumbnail you might think it's a, a photograph of something because of how much detail is, is in there but as you uh you know close in on it you can tell and i think that's a, a big goal for my for myself at least in my illustrative work is is to try and um understand all the concepts and the fundamentals and the things that are important to learn to master the craft and then add the sense of um, artistry uh, or the sense of imagination that brings it to something that's different than uh, you know a photograph where it's just a here's literally exactly what is there you want to bring some some element of, of uh, uniqueness to it and I think that's an important thing as well but I want to share a quote um, that's attributed to him and that was uh, now it is the peasant who is the judge, and so it is necessary to represent his interests. And I thought that was an interesting um, quote, and, and um, without getting too political or philosophical or anything here, a, a lot of older paintings um, were done based on whoever was in charge or whatever the um, religious uh, facility that was leading at the time was in charge. So you get a lot of the people who could afford to not work in the fields and work for someone else to uh, you know make their money so they could stay alive or go off and hunt or for whatever reasons that you know do the things you could you could have all of those basic needs satisfied but the few people who would pay would uh, commission you know painters or, or illustrators or people who could really spend you know their life's work on this to do stuff that would be for the upper class or the upper crust of uh, you know the religious societies or the political societies or whatever so that's why a lot of older art is really you know this is our origin story or this is uh you know all hail the great caesar or king or whoever is in charge at the time but there became a time where knowledge started to grow for people who were you know middle class or lower class and also you know with um food being more readily available that enough people could start to pursue higher forms of art and creation and uh, craftsmanship and also uh, they didn't have to do it because they were paid to do this particular thing and i think that was a glorious time in the art world because it started to change and you started to see stuff that was more focused around what the artist was interested in or what um you know poorer people were interested in and you start to see a bunch more different themes come out in, in artwork and everything as well but uh, the, the reason that that quote kind of um, 
I think is, is, is interesting today is because we have, for the first time in kind of human history right now, uh, stuff like YouTube. You're watching this right now, and um, granted, I'm a poor, broke artist just like you guys, and subsist mainly on uh, coffee and cigarettes and Mountain Dew. Um, but it's it's a great time because we can we can try and find sustainability so that we can share knowledge and we can we can talk about what is interesting to ourselves or what is interesting to our friends and those who are around us and that we can have that capability to share that stuff and it's turning to be global which is amazing so i'm getting to see you know uh, some of the, some of you guys that are subscribed uh, put up your own um great animation videos so i anytime you guys subscribe to my channel i, I go over and i, and I watch um I watch your guys' videos and I usually try to give them a thumbs up and everything too because I think there's some really cool stuff that you guys are coming up with that I would have never thought of. Or you've got an interesting way because you're um, doing animation in Russia and maybe they don't have the same um, resources that we have here in America or different ones or probably even better ones. I don't know. I don't. I can't. I don't speak or read Russian or or you're from India or something and 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 it's just such a wonderful time to be alive and I think it's so important to do stuff every day and to try and grow your mind. And, um, and and present things that are interesting to you and try and learn from other people who aren't necessarily the authority on the subject but are living in those places and experiencing those things and try and learn and grow from that way. I think that's an amazing time for, for us as creative people, no matter what medium you're in, to, to be in. Um, so definitely try and use that uh, to the best of your ability each and every day while it's available. Because uh, I think this is a unique time in history and there's a lot of things that, that could make that go away or that it could get better and I think it's it's our job as creatives to try and support as much sharing of free knowledge and free ideas and, and uh, free creative stuff with each other so that we can uh, bolster this medium uh, together uh, so keep pursuing your dreams each and every day and uh, share it down below if you agree with me if you disagree with me whatever that is but let's go ahead and get into some animation if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the videos we give ourselves 48 frames it's two seconds of animation i go off and i find a rig that i've never used before it's a free resource for you guys to play around with and we kind of go from there a little bit over the shoulder just hang out with me while i animate a little bit of talking through the process or I'm talking about something that's that's in the creative field and uh overall the main goal of this stuff kind of like we were talking about before is really to uh encourage you guys to go off and create your own stuff and inspire you um, whether it's because we looked at some great artist today or we found a cool quote or we talked about a unique idea or you disagree with everything I'm saying and you want to do something to prove me wrong. I don't care. I just want you guys to create stuff because I think that's that's our job as, as in this time in history as creative people is to, to push ourselves as, as hard as we can and to try and create and, and learn and grow so we can raise the, the medium to new levels. Um, so... Again, rambling, so let's go ahead and get in here. This is the Spaceman Stan rig. It's a free rig you can grab over at uh, Creative Crash, and I will link to it uh, along with uh, more information that we've already talked about down below if you guys want to um, follow along or read up more or check out more of uh, Ilya's artwork. So I was thinking for today, I'm kind of not in the walk cycle mood, so let's do a side step. Kind of a hesitant, not necessarily a sneak, but more of a creep kind of a walk or not creep is in creepy but creep is in creepy meaning kind of walk so let's get in a good position here and again i've never used this rig so we'll kind of play around and if that idea isn't working then we can always shift it to something else uh, should i do it this way let's do it how we keep it so what I was going to do is basically rotate everything to the side. Um, thought we could do it this way easier. Boop. There we go. Let's just do that. And that way we can still kind of go from one layer to the next. And not have to work in uh, mixing attributes like a little bit of X and a little bit of Z or And I like to always, you know, this is probably uh, a repeat for some of you who watch a lot of my videos, but I, I always like to, uh, for doing walks, unless there's a specific reason, I like to keep the arms in, in FK 
and the feet and IK. I'm going to keep the feet and IK so I can get those plants, those solid plants on the ground, and the uh, arms and FK so you can get the uh, basic movement from the movement of the chest and it, it helps to flow. Still want to get in there and tweak it for all those things, but that's usually the approach that I tend to uh, do things. And since it's going to be a little longer creep, let's go ahead and, and uh, squish him down. I'll bump him a little bit of that hunch or bend over. Okay. And go ahead and bring that down. Bend that up. I thought this was a really kind of unique um, stylized ring, so definitely check it out. It seems like so far it should be pretty straightforward to animate. We'll see as we go along if we come into some big hitches, but for what I'm thinking right now, it seems like it'll, uh, it'll work pretty well. And we are using uh, Autodesk Maya 2014 for this video, so if you guys want more information on that, definitely check out the link below. But right now we're just uh, kind of creating our storytelling pose for how we want to approach the, the start of this shot. on that side. hand pose here, make our hand pose a little more interesting. Hands hands and uh, facial expressions are always uh, two things that I think are most important for acting personally. You might disagree, but I think if you can get good hand, expressive hands and good expressive uh, facial positions, you can, you can get away with um, not doing a ton else. <laughs> that, uh, that's not totally true, but that's a goes a big way to um, to selling any sort of acting shot. Now, again, you want uh, cohesion throughout the body or anything, but I mean, if you look at um, you know YouTube videos, what is the what are the majority of them? They're uh, you know uh, upper torso and the hands, and that's enough for everyone to kind of get the idea of how people feel. You don't really need to worry too much about the hips or the legs or any of that kind of stuff. Now, does that mean that you don't animate them? No, but the most important parts to sell, you know, an expression or a feeling or um, a mood of your character is to really lock in those hand poses and those facial expressions.
That was just kind of my own thing. If you guys disagree, let me know in the comments below. Okay, I feel like that's a fairly interesting starting pose or not. So I feel like that's a good place to uh, start off from. Let's go ahead and save our file. Again, we are using Autodesk Maya uh, 2014 for today's video. Definitely check them out. They are awesome folks, and they do uh, have a great products. So definitely check them out. And let's get this started. So grab everything. We set our first key. stuff with my steps rather than have them be really uniform for today's video but we'll see let's see how it is so i think i'll have the legs cross over first and then or maybe we'll have them just touch first Again, just doing kind of the uh, feet and the hips to start off with. Do something for the ears. We'll go through six. Bring that over. Get the hips. going with what we have right now. Hold that and then let that form again. Maybe bring that that way. Okay, and then let's bring the hips down. Hold that. Again, I know that this one's a little bit off-centered here of weight, so we might pull it back a little bit, but it is Forcing through some movements, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. But maybe we'll go back. We'll go down there. Go back up. Go down there. Okay, go back up. Go down there. And then go back up. So let's go ahead and see what we have. Okay. Look at our uh, graph that we have here. Let's look at our translated scene. Let's try and make that a little more consistent. Let's try to play around with the timing a little bit more on this, but I don't think our goal is still kind of more consistent. Uh, we'll lock, but we'll still uh, tweak the spacing on each uh, step so it looks smoother. still feels pretty balanced. That color's fine. Maybe a little bit further there. Let's so translate X and then look at it from that way. Translate. 
defensive position here on these feet. I'm just going to leave you locking in those teens here. So let's go ahead and keep this back foot lower and almost drag it. And this front foot can be more pronounced. Again, I'm just going to go back in and set all those keys one more time just to make sure. steps here as well. Let's go ahead and see that now. Doesn't have to be exactly even, I want some variation in there, but and let's go ahead and see that now. Okay, and let's look at uh, this guy here. And let's uh, try and get that twist in here. here. I just want to kind of feel that rather than really need to see it. That feels a little better. One thing, like I said, I am a little worried about is uh, this eyeball. So let's see. Thing. 
it's in the eyeball itself. Let's go ahead and save our file before we do that, though. Sometimes when I get in there and mess with things that you're not really supposed to, you uh, have some trouble. If we could get into uh, just the geometry they actually give you. I wonder if we could uh, see, it'd be cool enough even if we could just do it through deleting. Let's, uh, let's move past that for right now. Just put our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons back on. Let's do some more with the arms and everything. And then we'll see if we can't get in there and tweak that eye a little bit more. Worst comes to worst, maybe we can uh, rotate that. Seems pretty, pretty much in there. So maybe we'll have to just scale it back a little bit more. Maybe it's the eyelid itself. See, it just doesn't cover it anymore. in the socket I wouldn't have been too worried about it. Okay, let's see how long we can kind of keep everything where it's at. We can really do a blink and blink into that one.
this is part of the fun of doing these videos with you guys live is uh, sometimes stuff breaks and I think that's important to show there's not enough uh, videos out there I think that really show that kind of stuff especially for people who are new to animation sometimes it's just stuff breaks own the problems and see if you can figure out creative solutions for how to fix them. not going to be very good, but at least it'll be something to give us that transition from workable at least now. At least it doesn't look so awkward. And let's see if we can do something with the mouth here. Uh, okay, so facial controls are not this rig's strong point. so great on the eye, but at least it looks like something. That's what you gotta do. You gotta be able to work with whatever you get. And that's the fun part about getting um, different rigs all the time, is you uh, sometimes have to come up with creative solutions that you wouldn't have um, done otherwise. So, let's go ahead and look at eBay Sky. Let's see if we can do a little bit of uh, return to Z here. So Yeah. 
to somehow like tone it down more and more because you'll add like extra little things and things like that. Yeah. So now we'll tone it down a little more. Of course, just something so it would be kind of like hitting the, the hip there and bouncing a little bit as you left. Just another thing we can play around with. sooner let's see probably about an extra two frames there right okay and then let's uh, minimize that a lot too here Take it out a little bit. Yeah. I just want a little bit of this I kind of want to keep the arm a little more neutral in this one. Um, I still want to do some movement on there, but I feel like there's a lot of other stuff going on that you don't really need too much of. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of swing on this guy. So one arm's kind of bounce a little bit and the other one's got a little bit of a swing to it. And we'll break it up with the forearm that way too. Okay, let's see, let's go ahead and drop this guy now. And uh, we'll go forward here. Drop back there. Go forward here. And we'll go back there. Go forward. Exactly, but a similar amount, let's see. Again, probably a little too much there, so let's just uh, take it down by about a frame from our extremes there. And that's one way. You can also um, just grab everything in the graph editor and scale it back, but I tend to find that uh, that can get funky sometimes doesn't always scale correctly so I usually will just uh, key the one or two frames before and use that as my new extreme if I want to scale something back that's a little better and I think we'll probably tone down this arm a little bit more as well okay So um, do a little more in the arm itself, not just the forearm. Yeah, let's take a look at that now. That feels a little better. Again, just so you get a little bit of movement in there. Now let's go ahead and pull the 
this guy. Let's do rotate Y, so I'll go down a little bit. Go up. And I'll do, and this is probably too much, but we'll see. And usually I'll only uh, exclusively use one rotate in an elbow because an elbow really only has one joint there. But every once in a while, um, and especially with these, if we're trying to keep them under an hour, um, I'll go ahead and let myself use uh, two. But as you see, uh, I'm not really using two for a movement, but really for the posing, which tends to work a little bit better. And it's okay, but um, I mean, a lot of times you want to kind of mimic the way that you animate, but the way that a body actually moves. Um, so, you know, you have you can move in all three directions with your shoulder, but your forearm really can only move in one direction, but it's able to switch because of the arm that's doing the moving, but the forearm is really not. I, I can't keep my upper arm straight and bend my forearm. It's bending the arm muscle itself. So you kind of want to do that, have that same approach with uh, how you use arms as well. Now, at least that's from my experience what I've found that's helpful. And it's also helpful too to kind of simplify um, and have a good basic approach for things because then it helps you. Um, it's like a, a it's kind of like a math formula. Now that doesn't mean that animation is like that, but if you have a generic formula that you can start with, it gives you a good it's like, it's like a road trip. With a road trip, not necessarily you know a specific one, but if you're like, I'm going to go on a road trip, you have, you know, I want a road trip to North Dakota. The fun parts about road trips are um, you have a vague map of how to get to North Dakota, but uh, the road trip itself lets you veer off of that and take different ways as long as you know your end kind of destination. Okay, sorry about that. Let's uh, to wrap this up. Unfortunately, we have some life stuff come up, so I probably won't get as much polish on this one as usual. But we'll uh, tone down this arm here. We'll do a little bit on the fingers and do some toes, and then I think we'll call it for today. So let's see here. feels like it's a little too uh, drawing of the eye to there. That doesn't want to. I want to keep it loose, but I don't want it to like cause the eye to go directly there to begin with. So let's go ahead and do a little bit on those toes here. Let's do a little bit uh, to the tap down. It means we're probably going to have to lift up that toe a little bit more um, on that passing position here. with the ground plane here. Okay, so let's look at that now. We definitely get that little bit of a settle on the plant down on the foot. And again, it's kind of doing a similar thing here. We'll drag the toe there, lift it up here, and plant it. raised pretty pretty high enough. Let's see. Okay. Again we'll go ahead and save that off and let's go ahead and look at these fingers here. Let's put it all in here.
hips. a little bit different uh, timing on the rest of the hand and we'll delay the tip of the thumb a little bit more here. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of bounce on this guy. The fingers. ourselves a place to start from here. Let's grab some air. Actually feels alright. And then uh, let's go ahead and delay it one frame. So we go after the wrist right. And let's take the tips here. finger and we'll lead with it so we push it forward frame and the pinky finger and we'll follow with it so we'll push it back frame. Let's kind of look at it now. Okay, and I think we can take uh, the bases of each of them and uh, just minimize it a little bit more. So we still get that movement, but it's a little bit less than it was before. Now let's take a look there now. Okay, and let's take a look at that thumb. Grab both of those. And I think we'll delay this by about two frames so that it's not hitting at the same time. Let's take a look back at it. Uh, and let's try to tone the wrist down a little bit more here as well. Just feels like it's a little too loose now that those hands are going. sneaking behind somewhere here. Scale that up a little bit more. Okay, good. Let's take a look now. And let's move this. Push it 
that feels all right. Let's, let's take a look back at where we started. We were looking at the beautiful work of Ilya Repin. He said, uh, now it is the peasant who is the judge, and so it is necessary to represent his interests. And I think another point that I don't think I talked about in the beginning is really know your audience, know who you're uh, wanting to talk to, and uh, try and represent their interests as well. Um, so that takes another kind of level of thinking with your work as well. You know, if you, if you know you want to um, reach out to, uh, you know, whatever your, your mission kind of statement is with your work, um, be true to that as well. And, uh, you know, if your audience wants something different than uh, what you want to give, you have to be aware is that, you know, at least something that you want to think through. You know, if you have faith in yourself and you have a different audience, then maybe you wait for a new audience to come, or maybe you tailor your stuff more to uh, reach out to the people who are at least looking. Um, but also be aware that we live in a lucky uh, age and time where, where we're allowed to share ideas and, and come together and understand and be creative and share that with the world and be appreciative of that. And that being said, keep following your dreams each and every day. I love you guys lots. And... Uh, if you're watching this, you guys are the creative future. I totally believe in you, and we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.